Hello, welcome to Brahma's Notes. This is the third video on electrolysis. And today we are going to look at some more terminologies that are involved in electrolysis. Electrolysis, we had seen in our previous video, that is the decomposition or breakdown of a substance whenever we pass electricity through it. So, electrolysis, we saw that it comes from electrolyte or electrolysis towards breaking down an electrolyte. Lysis and electrolyte is breaking down of an electrolyte. So, it's the decomposition of a substance which is an electrolyte because it should be able to conduct electricity by passing electric current through it. And so is accompanied by chemical changes. For something to break down, something to dissociate or, or ionize, it must be a chemical change because we are changing the chemical composition of that substance. And usually this chemical change or these chemical changes occur at the electrodes. Now let us see the meaning of this word electrodes. So this is a word that we shall always be dealing with in electrolysis. Electrodes are the two poles or conductors through which electric current enters and leaves the electrolyte. Now remember electrolyte is either a liquid molten form or solution form aqueous. So what's an electrode? It will be that conductor that will connect between the wire and the solution. When you look at this image here, we have the, the wire, this is our short wire, connected to a battery, and this is the second wire connected to the same battery. However, when you look at our container here, we have our electrolyte, electrolyte solution. So the substance which is going to connect between this wire and the solution will be the electrode. So these rod-shaped structures you see here, these are the electrodes. So electrodes are the conductors through which electric current enters and leaves. So if our car current is entering our electrode in this direction, then it enters the electrolyte. Then in the second electrode, it will be leaving the electrolyte to, to the wire. So these rod-shaped structures, these will be our electrodes. Take note, the electrodes are connected to the terminal of the DC supply. Obviously through the wire, these, these rods or these electrodes are connected to the DC supply. And before the switch is closed, the electrodes have no charges. Obviously, if there is no switch, that means there is no battery because the circuit isn't yet complete. As such, we can't say electrodes are charged. So they will have no charges if at all the switch is still open. And they will always acquire charges on closure of the switch, hence giving the types of electrodes. So we are going to look at the different types of electro electrodes and at least now we should know that the different types or kinds of electrodes will be determined by how we have connected them to the switch or to the battery. So before closing the switch, they have no charge. Let us now look at the different types of electrodes. We have basically two types, the anode and the cathode. Nothing to do, we have to get used to these terminologies because man will always have to find a way of naming something so that they identify it. So an anode, let's start with the anode. Anode is the positively charged electrode through which electric current enters the electrolyte. So one thing to note, positively charged. And then current enters the electrolyte. So let us see what we mean by that. Let's bring back our image and see. So we have our positive terminal here and our negative terminal of the battery. We all know that actual electrons move from the negative terminal to the positive terminal. Electrons will move in this direction. However, our current, our electricity will be moving in the opposite 
direction to the flow of current so what does that mean it means this will be the flow of our current of our electricity so an elec an anode is a positively charged electrode through which electric current enters the electrolyte so if i'm to extrapolate the direction of this current you will find that it is actually entering our electrolyte this is our electrolyte the solution in this container so this anode here will be the one taking in current into the electrolyte and it's positively charged because it's connected to the positive terminal of the battery so positively charged is connected to the positive terminal of the battery and usually in our circuits for you to tell the positive terminal it will usually be represented by a longer stripe something long like this while the cathode as we shall see it will be a shorter one so usually the positive terminal is longer so anode is positively charged because it's connected to the positive terminal of the battery and it's the one through which electric current enters the electrolyte so what can we take or not about the anode one because it is electron deficient it is positively charged relative to the cathode as we shall see so it is electron deficient that's why it is positively charged because it has less electrons two as i have already stated it is connected to the positive terminal of the dc supplies as you can see here in green it is connected to the positive terminal that's why it is positive and usually it's tall in size in this circuit symbol as i have shown you here we have some symbols when drawing these electricity circuits and it's usually connected to this taller sized stripe here so this is positive while this is negative so the anode will be this other side now let's look at the cathode cathode it is going to be the reverse of the anode cathode is negatively charged and it's the electrode at which the electric current leaves the electrolyte now we are going to still look at our image our current is moving in this direction opposite to the flow of electrons and you'll note that actually if i'm to extrapolate the direction of flow of current we shall find that it's actually moving the current from the electrolyte to the wire so it's the negatively charged electrode at which electric current leaves the electrolyte we still have our electrolyte here and then our current leaves through this rod here which is our cathode this electrode so this electrode through which our electric current leaves the electrolyte will be the cathode or simply the one connected to the negative terminal it's connected to the negative terminal and it is negatively charged simple so one thing to note it is always rich maybe let's use rich showing it has enough it is rich with electrons it always has more electrons compared to the anode two it is connected to the negative terminal of the dc surplus so whatever electrode is connected to the positive it will be the anode if it's connected to the negative it will be the cathode so negative it will be negatively charged positive it will be positively charged so our cathode is also usually short in size in the circuit symbol so usually this is how it will look like circuit symbol will always look like this so our negative will always be the shorter one while our positive will always be the longer one so if you look at our cathode here come to this is our cathode electrode and is connected to this shorter stripe in our circuit symbol while our electrode will be connected to this longer one and it will be the anode so these are some of the types of electrodes that we have cathode and anode let us now look at the ionic theory at least now we are re reaching the core of electrolysis and by the time we finish this short video 
we shall have some good grasp on electrolysis and we shall be looking forward to at least seeing some applications of electrolysis. So what does it state? It states that an electrolyte consists of free positively and negatively charged particles called ions. That is simple. Which are responsible for the transmission of electricity through electrolytes. Simple statement. We had seen that electrolytes conduct electricity in solution or aqueous form, solution or aqueous or molten or fused. All these will be the same. So an electrolyte consisting of ions which are responsible for transmission of electricity through electrolytes and at least we had a look at okay we haven't looked at them types of ions so we have basically two types of ions we have cations these are positively charged ions and we have anions which are negatively charged at least under my chemical bonding series we looked at the different types of ions positively charged meaning it has more protons than electrons while negatively charged meaning it has more electrons than protons so let's go and see what this ionic theory is all about let's now look at the different examples of ions just like you may have covered them under bonding or formation of ions from atoms we have two types the positively charged which are the cations and the negatively charged which are the anions usually metals ionize by loss of electrons and as such they will always have more protons than electrons so we shall form positively charged ions potassium ion sodium ion calcium ion magnesium ion aluminium ion and the zinc ion however for non-metallic ions non-metals ionize by gain of electrons so they will always have more electrons than protons as such they will have a negative charge so examples are mainly from group 7 elements we have the chloride ion bromide ion and iodide ion however some cations can also be polyatomic ions for example the ammonium radical so this is also positively charged and we may look at it you never know under radicals under the nonmetals we have some polyatomic ions like the sulfate ions nitrate ions carbonate ions and the hydroxide ions so these are the different ions that we are going to see when looking at electrolysis let us now have a look at a virtual experiment that's true virtual just like this one we are going to investigate the movement of ions during electrolysis so things we shall need we shall need a power source that is a dc supply we shall need a microscope slide where we shall put our filter paper we shall need some crocodile clips to attach the wire to the electrodes we shall need some filter paper where we shall put our electrolyte and we shall need some connecting wires to transmit our electricity outside the electrolyte we shall need our colored salt so that we can easily see the movement of these ions at least with the help of the color change or movement so we shall mainly use potassium permanganate as our electrolyte although you can also use copper too sulfate so let's get started this is the setup we need our power source obviously we shall assume we have our switch as usual we shall have to get our wire we shall need crocodile clips to attach the wire to our microscope slide we shall need the filter paper where we shall put our crystal of potassium permanganate which will act as our electrolyte So here we are looking at the procedure. If at all you have access to some of these equipments, you can try and pause the video and try to set it up as per the procedure. But one thing to note is that we shall need to moisten the filter paper with water so that we aid the movement of the ions in potassium permanganate. So this procedure is basically showing you how you can set up this setup. And if at all you would like to go through it, I still emphasize you to pause the video. So let us see what actually happens. Remember we have connected our power source with the help of the crocodile clips.
to a filter paper which has been moistened meaning we have added some water to it and then we are placing potassium permanganate on this moist filter paper then we close our switch so we let nature take its course so if one is able to create the setup we have seen on the previous page what observations could that individual see one we could see a purple color moving towards the anode remember the anode is the positively charged electrode and it's normally connected to the positive terminal of the power supply so our positive terminal is this longer one here so this is positively charged while the shorter one is negatively charged so we shall have our anode this other side of the crocodile clip and our cathode will be this other side so if we see the purple color moving towards the anode that means the only possible scenario is because of the manganate ions that are coming from the potassium permanganate so this crystal potassium permanganate will split into potassium ions and manganate ions so we shall see these negatively charged ions moving towards the positive anode so we shall see manganate ions manganate ions will be moving towards the anode and that's why we shall be able to see a purple color because they are basically purple so the permanganate ions are attracted by the anode and therefore move towards the anode and this purple color of permanganate is due to the manganate ions so we can see a color movement on our moist filter paper because these ions are being pulled by the negative charge on this anode and for, uh, for for this case this anode will be the crocodile clip because we don't have electrodes dipped in any solutions just a filter paper to which we have attached our crocodile clip so they'll move towards the left to the positive side and we can easily see that movement when we see the purple color moving to our left hand side so this is proof that actually ions are moving around because the permanganate ions are well known for their characteristic purple color and movement to the left it shows they are moving towards the positively charged terminal yet for them they are negatively charged so with this kind of introduction to the ionic theory we shall go into details and look at some more common examples of electrolysis but hopefully you find these videos useful if you do don't forget to like share subscribe comment most importantly to hit that bell notification so that whenever i upload new content you are among the first people to be notified be well